you after the falls to make cool 3D relief carvings like this one of Mount Rainer? Well, keep watching. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. If you are new to the channel, take a second to click that little subscribe button in the corner in order to get all the latest tips, tricks, tutorials such as what you are watching now. As part of a recent machine review that I was doing, I produced this 3D relief carving of Mount Rainer. Now the detail and texture in this was absolutely amazing and I loved the way that it came out. But I got a lot of questions about how do we get those type of files. That is exactly what I'm going to show you in this episode today. A tool where you can effectively go anywhere in the world, see the topography and shape of that landscape and download a 3D file called an STL that you can ultimately create your carvings with. And all this is for free, which is obviously excellent. Now, just to be clear, we are only doing the first step of this in terms of the second step creating your tool paths and things like that i'm going to be covering that on a future episode in carve co maker but obviously this first part is relevant to anybody who just wants these type of files so let's jump over onto the pc and see how easy this really is so the first thing you'll want to do is head to google and simply search for touch terrain the first link is what we're after the other links give you different information such as the blog that tells you about the most recent updates going on with this service so we'll click the first link and let it load and then follow the on-screen instruction of simply please click anywhere to continue. Now whilst this is loading what I will say is there are other providers of this service available on the internet but I find Touch Terrain to be one of the best because it gives you lots more options ultimately making it more flexible and that flexibility ultimately allows you to get the best option for what you want out of the STL. The downside to that flexibility is it can look a little bit complicated with all these options over here but I'll run through them very shortly and it is simpler than you think. So for those with a much shorter attention span, I'm going to do a very quick run through on how to get the files from this website. I'm then going to go back to the start and go through in more detail explaining how you can improve the quality of the file that you are downloading. So let's jump in and start. First, the drop down menu at the very top here, change this to AW3D30 and this should give you worldwide data for any area that you are looking at. Then come to the search bar and obviously search for the area you're after. Mount Rainer is what I'm doing today. Once it all loads up and make sure everything is as you want it, then come over to the 3D printer options. Ignore the fact it says 3D printer options, but go to the first menu below it. Select CNC large size, then down to the next one and select CNC high detail. Come to the blue button on the right that says recenter box on map. And this will basically give you the area it is going to download the file of. You can drag this around, maneuver it wherever you want to and put it in different positions. But once you've found the area that you are after, simply click export selected area and download file. That will give you the STL file that you are after. Now, let's go back to the start and go through all these settings in more detail. And I'll explain how to give you much higher quality files using this same setup. Now the first thing we'll do is search for an area that we are interested in. Obviously for the purpose of this it's Mount Rainer. So I'll type Mount Rainer and hit enter. And as this loads we can clearly see obviously the topography of the land is now a lot rougher given that it is a mountainous area. Now the base underneath this is Google Maps. So if you are familiar with that facility everything works the same within here. You can zoom in and out using the mouse. And you can also drag left and right to move the area about. Now obviously every time you do this it will need to regenerate the overlay of the topography on top of the base map. And if you are struggling to find a specific area there is a transparency option, option up here on the right hand side. You can fade this up and down so you can see the base map clearer over the rough terrain structure. We'll leave it there for now so we've got a bit of both going on in this view and I will zoom back in slightly just to centre this mountain in the middle. Now let's start to look through these options on the right hand side. So the first one is possibly one of the most important elevation data source. This is basically telling you about how much detail is in the area that we are looking at based on the source of data that it is using. Now the reason I say this is there are lots of satellites out there tracking this different data at different levels of quality. Ultimately the thing you need to know is you are after the smallest number possible. So this first one that loads up is at 10M. 
and that is basically the best quality available at the moment. And as the number gets larger, it basically means the quality will get less. So let's say, for example, we go to this GTO 1000M option. We should click on that. And ultimately, when this map regenerates, we can see that it's a lot more pixelated because there is a lot less data for it to work with. So for now, I'll switch back to the high quality 10M one and let this regenerate. Now, the thing I will point out, obviously, this says US only. So if you are looking outside of the US, you will have to use one of the other ones. But ultimately, focus on getting the lowest number possible. Now, there are some factors that affect this, and we'll come on to those shortly. But ultimately, you want the lowest number possible, no matter what area you are looking at. We've got a few different options below this, such as adjusting the sun angle and direction on the map itself to try and make things more defined. But to be honest with you, I just leave these as standard, the same as the gamma, which affects the contrast of this map, because I find this is easy enough to work with. But obviously, if you want to play about with those, you can always change them and then revert them back to the default settings if you need to. Now, as a very quick tip, obviously, a lot of these settings have question marks next to them. You can hover over and it'll give you different explanations as to how the various settings work. So if you are in doubt, hover over those. Some of them even have links to videos explaining what that feature does. Next, we have the area selection box. If I click and expand this, we've got a couple of options. We can put specific coordinates in if we want to. But as we're in the area that we know we're after, we're going to click recenter box on map and it will give us this red outline showing in the area that ultimately we will end up downloading as the STL file. Now, one of the reasons I prefer touch terrain over other options is this flexibility of being able to adjust this box to any shape that you want, width or height, and ultimately having that extra control, which is what I prefer. And if for any reason you do this and it's not a shape or size that you want, you can simply click recenter and it'll put it back to the default selection. As it stands, I'm happy with that selection, so I'll minimize this down. Now, as we move on to the next option, do not be put off by the fact it says 3D printer options. This facility was originally developed for 3D printing for the community, but ultimately they have adapted some things to make it easier for CNC users as well. And what this section is really about is actually the quality of the STL file that we are planning to download. So let's work through these options. Now straight away we'll see 100 millimeters width. So what it is saying is if we download this STL file as it stands, it will interpret the width of this red box to be 100 millimeters in the actual file size that it produces. And by default, if you change the width of this, let's say take it 280 millimeters it will adjust the height accordingly now as i said there are some features in here to try and make it easier for cnc users so for example instead of millimeter measurements there is simply large medium and small sizes for cnc for most users you can simply click the large size and that will be sufficient quality next we have nozzle diameter with varying diameters that you typically get on 3d printers but again we have a couple of cnc options high medium and low for the most part we are always going to want the highest detail possible so again we'll click cnc high detail the next area is to tile your design let's say if you wanted this stl file broke up into multiple parts you can select this and as you select change the selections you'll see the box gets divided so if we do it a two by two it would then download four separate stl files which you could ultimately manage later in your software for the purpose of today we'll revert this back to one by one now anyone with an eagle eye may have noticed that as we've just been adjusting these settings this effective dem resolution is adjusting right here now this is quite important and ultimately you want to try and get the number as low as possible but do notice the difference between the source file and the actual effective file we're getting now to try and explain this as easy as possible basically what it is saying although the source reference is 10m the actual output is going to be 90 because of the amount of data it's trying to fit into that area so what i was saying earlier on about this drop down you want the smallest number in actual fact even going to a 30 or a 20 it's kind of irrelevant based on this number here and ultimately you want to get that number as low as possible so yes even though the us has the highest quality available the output that you're getting makes the most difference and the key thing is getting this number as low as possible to get the maximum quality in our stl file now i'll come back to this in a second but i'll just finish off these various options below it just to explain the process 
Now the model by thickness, again this is sort of targeted for 3D community, you can adjust the thickness of the base that it exports at with these various options. Now because this is usually something you can control within your CNC programming software, I often just leave it as the default as one millimeter. Similar scenario with the vertical exaggeration. Let's say we almost wanted to make this mountain seem taller than it was. We could magnify that and let's say take it to one and a half times deeper than it actually is. But again, this is something you can usually do in your CNC CAM software. So for default, we will leave it at the one which is actually the true representation of the area we are taking. And STL binary is simply the file format that we want to download it in. This is the most common. So we're going to leave it as STL binary. Some people might like OBJ files, but as I say, STL binary is the most common and therefore what we are after in this tutorial. So that is fairly simple. And once you put your settings in, you simply click export selected area and download file. You will get this processing screen appear and depending on the size and quality of your file, it may take a few seconds. It may take 10, 20, 30 seconds. So just bear with it and it will process. And whilst that is loading, just a quick reminder to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. And once it's finished generating, you can download the zip file highlighted here and get the STL file that you are after. Now one thing I will just point out if I go back to the main screen we have to remember this is a free service that is provided and it will only therefore generate the files at a certain resolution. If we take it too far it's going to struggle to handle it. And I'll quickly explain how to get around this should you encounter that you are trying to request this file in too high of detail. So I'm going to come over to the options over here and instead of CNC large I'm going to take this right up to the maximum size of 300 millimeters. And we've also got on CNC high detail. So ultimately at this moment, it's trying to export this as the highest possible detail available. If I click export selected area and download file, we get this message saying your requested job is too large. Please reduce the area down or lower the print resolution. Now what we can see here is it references kilo pixels at 1129 and it says it can't be more than 700. So if we go back to that size, and what we're going to do is drop the 300 down to 250 and we'll try generating that again. Oh, so it's come down quite a bit. We're now at 784, but still we're not at that 700 limit. So let's go back once more. And we're going to drop that down a little bit more to 225. Let's see if this works. Perfect, so it's processing. So ultimately, even though this has the option to export at very large sizes for STL files, if you are using a high data source, it is just containing more information that this will process and simply lower the resolution down until obviously you get to this screen and it will ultimately process your file. And obviously once you've downloaded your STL file, you can then take it into your favorite CAD CAM software. I use Carveco Maker and ultimately we can see the terrain in all its detail and therefore you can carve with it, create your toolpaths, do everything that you needed. I will just head back into Chrome and mention one last thing. If I go back to the maps, the terrain maps that it uses only processes data effectively that is hard areas such as above water. So for example, if you're processing an area that has a lake, it will only process the top of the lake, not the depth of the lake itself. If you are doing a coastline, for example, all the water area will be flat. It will not map the terrain below the water level. So it is effectively everything above water level that it will process. So there we have it. And despite some things looking a little bit confusing, a fairly easy way to get those 3D topography files that you're after to do your relief carvings. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I will be doing a follow up to this of converting those files into actual CNC files in Carve Co Maker. There will be a link up in the corner when that video becomes available. That is everything for today's episode. I really hope you found it useful. If you did, as always, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons. If you want to get involved for one-to-one -one help, giveaways and early access to content, then check out those links in the description area below. I will see you all on the next episode.